video, we're going to look at how you can make encapsulations based off of rotation in Geometer Sketchpad. So I already created this one so you can see a shape that you can make. And notice that I drag this point around, it changes all the other shapes, and it gives me a lot of creativity to do a little bit more with actually drawing. Um, these are all straight segments, but because I have so many points, it starts to look a little bit more like the shape is a little bit more fluid. So in this orange shape, maybe I can see a dinosaur in there that's being rotated around, or just being creative and seeing what I can, small little changes I can make to look, make it look a little bit more like what I think it's supposed to be. So maybe even more looks like a dinosaur now. I don't know, but I'm going to go over the steps that you can do to make a tessellation like this. To begin with, we have to make a shape that can be tessellated all by itself. And to do that, I'm going to choose a regular triangle. So we could have just as easily chosen a square or a regular hexagon. I like working with these regular triangles. To make a regular triangle, I've constructed a segment. I've chosen an endpoint. Now I'm going to construct circle by center and radius. This is the center. That's the radius. I have that circle. I'll do the same thing again, but choose point B as the center. And then I have this other circle. What that does for me is it gets the intersection at point C. So now when I construct these segments, I have an equilateral triangle, and I know that because C is equidistant from both of those, and that distance is the length of AB. To clean this up a little bit, I highlighted the segments. Then I'll go to Display, Hide Circles, and this looks a lot better. I don't want this to get too big, so I'll just minimize it a little bit more. And this is going to be what starts our tessellation. Now, if I took this triangle and rotated it around 60 degrees around any of those points, we get a regular hexagon. That's just proving that it's tessellating. But I want to get a little more creative than that. So what I'm going to do is choose the point tool. And then starting at point C, I'm just going to make some kind of a pattern. doesn't matter exactly what it is. And then I'll start at point C, choose all those vertices, and construct segments. I don't care for this one, so I'll go to Display Hide. And now I have this curvy shape. This curvy shape, then, is going to be rotated to take care of this segment that's down here. So I'm going to choose all the segments and all the vertices. So I'm just clicking and highlighting in every single one of those. And since I'm going to be rotating around point A, I want that to be the last point that I choose. I'm going to rotate around point A in this direction. So we'll go to Transform, mark the center, go to point A, blew up, and Transform, Rotate. 60 degrees took it, uh, actually it's saying 90 degrees right now, it's 90 degrees counterclockwise. I want this to go 60 degrees clockwise. So if I just put in 60, I can see that's not working. 60 degrees clockwise is the same thing as 300 degrees counterclockwise. Now I can see it's giving me the shape that I want. So I'll hit rotate. I have all that. Display. Hide that segment. And I've got the start of this one now. It looks a little sloppy with all those letters on there. So what I'm going to do is highlight everything. Go to display. Show labels, which makes it look even uglier because it shows a label for all those segments. And then go back to display and say hide labels. And that just cleans it up by quite a bit. At this point, this whole shape is going to be rotated by 60 degrees around that point. So transform, rotate by, we'll go smaller than that. We'll start with 60 degrees. And there is the same shape, rotate it again. Transform, rotate by 60. And I can keep doing this. And it's going to use the same center, so I don't have to worry about marking the center this time. And I'll keep going all the way around until the whole shape is finished. And at this point, if I grab I grab one of the original points, you see how everything moves and flexes with it. So I do have my one shape right now that is tessellating. It's kind of boring, though, because all the outer edges are just segments. So we're going to improve this one by making that some kind of a curve also. Once again, to clean it up, I'm going to show the labels, then go to display, hide the labels, and that makes it look a lot better. Okay, so next step. I want to be able to work on one of these outer segments, and I want to, um, first of all, work with the midpoint. So I'm going to construct midpoint, and then this midpoint is going to be pretty significant because we're going to do some work on one side of the segment, rotate it by 180 degrees around that point. So like I did before, I'm just going to 
make a series of points, and then we will connect them by choosing one of these segments, ending right there, construct segments, display, we will hide that segment, and display, we'll hide that segment as well. And um, at this point, I'm going to choose all of these segments, all of these vertices, clicking and highlighting. I'm going to rotate by 180 degrees around this point. That's why I made sure to choose it last. We need to mark the center because we have a new center. Rotate by 180 degrees this time. And notice that it fills up the rest of this section and ends over at that point. So there's the rotation of 180 degrees. And I don't want all those labels on there again, so I'm going to display, show label, display, hide labels, and they're gone. And I believe this was the midpoint, and that's a pretty significant one for us because we're going to use that to our benefit as we um, start rotating out. So I'm going to show this label. I, I don't want to lose track of that one. Okay, next, I'm going to hide all of these segments because I don't want those straight segments on the outside. Highlight them, display, hide segments. I want this curve shape to go on all the outside. So once again, I'm going to choose all of those segments and all of the vertices, not just on one side of the midpoint, but I'm going to keep going and choose them from the other side as well. This is kind of a tedious part. I want all of these then to rotate around. They're going to rotate around this center point. So I choose it last. I'll mark that center and transform by rotating 60 degrees. And you can see it fills in that curve. I'll repeat this process by rotating 60 until I get all the way around. And one more time. And there we go. So I'm going to select everything, unselect point N. We'll go to display, show label, display, hide labels. And again, that cleans it up. But I have my point N in there, which is pretty significant. The next step. Um, I can start dragging things around and you see these cool shapes that we get as uh, the, the whole shape starts flexing and moving and I can try to get creative with this. But these are only six shapes. I should be able to tessellate off. And here's what I mean by this. I'm going to take this one shape and rotate it by 180 degrees around that point N. So I'm going to pause for a second while I select all these vertices and create an interior. Highlighted all those vertices, I'll go to Construct, Polygon Interior, and then it fills it in with that color. Um, I can make it whatever color I want. But now that I have this shape, I can rotate that as well. So um, mark the center, and then Transform will rotate this by 60 degrees, and then keep going all the way around the shape until we have all those centers filled in. One thing I noticed about these is that they're all yellow. They all kind of stream together. So to be a little more creative, I can change the colors. So display, color. Let's go ahead and make the other one turquoise. So this looks kind of neat. I can make them all different colors, but I've, I can see a little more clearly what's happening here. Okay, so here's the next step. Point N we said was significant. I want to take this point N and rotate this yellow shape 180 degrees around it. So we'll mark that new center. Transform, rotate by 180, and there it is. So for this one, maybe I want to change the color again. Let's go to a color of um, light blue, and you can see how it's going to start fanning out. I'm going to take each one of these outer ones and rotate by 180 degrees. I'll just remember to make sure and mark the center. Rotate by 180. There's another one. Oops, I had the wrong point, evidently. See, there's point N, I think one, two, three, four, five, six. It's the sixth point coming in. One, two, three, four, five, six. I believe it's that one. So we'll try this again. Transform, rotate by 180. And still have the wrong point. The right point down here that corresponds to that original point N, rotating that by 180 degrees, and I have that point. I'm going to pause it again as I fill in all these different shapes that make our first layer going around the original. So once again, we have this inner ring of six. I rotated one of them around by 180 degrees, and I have 
a branch coming off of each one of them. But now I should be able to get another swirl going in there, rotating around the center point. We go back in here, choose the original very center, choose point N, and then we're going to mark the center, transform, rotate by 180 degrees, and that gives me this point A rotated out here. Now I'll take this turquoise shape, mark the center, and then transform, rotate by 60 degrees. And I'll repeat that process until I get this whole next one done. In the right hand corner, I have this other swirl done up here, which is the exact same one that we have right there. Um, eventually, I'll clean this up and get rid of all those other points in there because I don't really don't want to see all those. It clutters it up a little bit. This one looks a lot nicer. Eventually, I can hide these labels as well. But my next step is to take this swirl and then move it down here and then move it down there and move it down there and move it over there, competing, completing the same process every time. Just to show you that again, I want this point to end up out here. And I'm going to take this point and rotate it by 180 degrees around our point N that was in this location. One, two, three, four, five, six. I believe that's the right one. So we'll mark the center and then rotate by 180 degrees. And I can see that it's filling that point out there. So now what I can do is mark this new center again and then rotate by 60 degrees. And since I'm using the same center, I just can go back to rotate 60, transform, rotate 60, and keep going all the way around this point until I get back to the original. They're all blue. I don't really want that, so I'll go ahead and take every other one oops, and highlight it. Those, I'll change display color to yellow, and that looks a lot better over there. So I'll do that again and again, and um, if I want to, I can come back in here, move some points around, and you can see it's not just changing here, it's changing on all the other ones simultaneously. And I can make small little changes to this original shape until I get it to look like something that is significant to me. If I have a plan, I can try to draw it by just dragging all these points around. And eventually I'll have this entire plane filled with this cool shape. And one last skill we can use to clean up all these different points. I'm going to make a big rectangle and highlight all this. We'll go to display, hide objects. Oh no, it's gone. Um, display, show all hidden. And I want the actual interiors to show up, so I'm just going to click on them individually. And this will take a little bit of time, but it's much quicker than trying to choose every single one of those points and segments individually. So I'm just going back, choosing all of these. I think I've got all of them. So all of the segments, all of the points are highlighted. Display, we're going to hide those objects, and that looks a lot better. Look, I missed a couple, so I'll just go back and choose these individually, and that's not so bad. It's not as tedious as it otherwise would have been. Display, we'll hide those objects, and we have our nice shape right now. If for some reason um, I'm not done editing it and I want to be able to grab, grab some more points to drag them around, I can go back to display, show all hidden, and um, if I just want to save like one, one all by itself, I can go back here and on the highlights, all of these sides and all of these vertices, I'm not going to take the time to do all of them, but then display, hide those other objects, and the ones I selected are back in here again so I can move these around to keep editing things. It's kind of a fun process, and um, it is pretty involved, but uh, you get some pretty good results out of this.